Let's open our Bibles in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel 3, from verse 23 onwards. Daniel 3, from verse 23. Amen. Who hasn't brought the Bible is there in the project. And the Bible says the following. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abnego, fell down, bound into the midst of their burning fire furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose, rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, your king. Look, he answered, I see four men lost, loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The brethren made. My brethren. Uh, this morning, the Lord has brought us here with a purpose. The purpose is to bless us. And if we are here, it is because we recognize the power of God. We recognize the God that we have served. And it is because of the fellowship that the Lord gives us. The fellowship is what connects men to God. Fellowship is for us the greatest legacy that Jesus left behind. The greatest inheritance that men can receive after the resurre resurrection of Jesus Christ is the fellowship with God. Because if it were not for the fellowship, we would not be here. If we were not for the fellowship that we have with God, there was no reason for us to be here, praising His name, glorifying Him for the blessing that He has given us after the passing of the hurricane, with all the deliverances, with all of the deeds of the Lord. We didn't lack in any moment the hands of God upon us. The hurricane passed. But the Lord has preserved us. The Lord has changed the direction of the hurricane. The Lord has opened the doors. The plea of the church was answered. The fellowship, what connected us to the Father, allowed Him to look to each one of our servants, His servants, for each home represented here. And the Lord sent His angel to be with us. And this morning we are going to participate in the supper of the Lord in glorification to this because once again the Lord has shown to be the King of Israel the faithful God the provider the God Emmanuel the God with us and it happens always in the history of the church the history of, of the Bible is spiritual history. We will see that God always preserves the faithful. I just read here a text, a text known by everyone. It speaks of the experience of three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They have been brought from Israel, Jerusalem, to serve to another king. The king Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king, of Babylonia. Babylon was the greatest empire of, of the time. There was no other power upon the earth. Everyone was subdued but to the King Nebuchadnezzar. And now 
he decided to build a statue, an uh, immense statue, and he conclaimed all the governors, the presidents, everyone that was a leader of the nations, the cities, or the provinces, they all were invited. And he decreed that everyone at the sound of a trumpet, as, as, as when the sign was given, they should always kneel down in front of the statue that represented the King Nebuchadnezzar. And the celebration began. And now when the trumpet sound, the sign was given, everyone knelt down. They were all in front of a valley where the statue was there, everyone in front of the statue, and everyone knelt down except three. And the Bible makes mention of these three, and those are these three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, friends of Daniel. They served the Lord. They didn't bow down bow down. And that's what they should do. They remained standing. Everybody saw them. And people went to speak with the king. That There were three that didn't kneel down. So call them. Let us give them a second opportunity. I'm going to ask them the sound to the trumpet to sound again and you kneel down. And they said, we don't need to answer about this business. The Lord to whom we serve can deliver us, and He will deliver us from the furnace of burning fire, and of your hand, O, o King. And then, King, you, you should know that we are not going to serve your King, your, your gods, and we are also not going to adore the statue that you have built. And they didn't bow. My brother, this is the picture, this today's picture, that um, governs this world. We know that the prince of the darkness, the prince of this world, is the one that commands everything. And everything that we see, this political system, monetary system, it's all done in order to make men to curve to the government of the enemy. But this morning we see that the Lord has uh, risen a people that is faithful. This morning we we know that in the midst of this world that is out there, the Lord has risen a people that has not bowed, bowed to the sin, that has not lost the spiritual values, that has not lost the values given by God, that has not let go of the, the, their own values in order to be corrupted by this world. And we are part of this faithful church. We are fighting to remain inside of this body, inside of this faithful church that has no name, but is here amongst us. And the Lord has given us the means for this. The Lord has blessed us because it is in Him that we trust. Psalm 21 says, some trust in horses and the others in the church, but we are going to make mention of our God. A few bow and fall, but we stand up and remain standing. Save us, Lord. Hear uh, us, our King, as we play. Many trust in many things, but we trust in only one thing. We trust in the King of Israel. We only trust in the Lord. And this is the position of these three young men, and this is our position. That's why, my brother, this morning, don't bow down to the things of this world. Don't get mixed up with the things of this world. Don't take the shape of the world that is out there. Because that's what the enemy of our souls wants. And when you let go of the blessing of God, when you take shape of this world, when you begin to act like the world, then you will lose your blessing and you'll be like everyone else. Now just bow a little bit, just just kneel down quickly, just so we don't have any problem. That's the big problem. Men to think that just by bow, bowing down quickly or letting go of the things of the Lord, just quickly, but when you do this, you are rejecting the Lord. You are 
letting go of your blessing and then you will be alone. Those men were uh, arrested and the king said, uh, increase the, the power of the furnace seven times more, increase the, the fire. And the Bible says that they were thrown there with uh, all their garments, everything, their tunics, their shoes, they were tied down. And the Bible tells us that when they opened up the door of the furnace, the soldiers that threw them inside, the, the soldiers died immediately. But nothing happened with the servants of the Lord. And there they were. When the king went to see what was happening with them, he was surprised. He was surprised. Because he says, Wait a minute. How many were thrown there? Didn't I ask to throw three? Yes, three were thrown. But I see four. Something's going on. I asked to throw three and now I can see four. And they are not tied out. And they are walking inside of the furnace. My brother. <coughs> Jesus was with them. The Lord went to meet them. And when they were thrown there, Jesus was there. You know what? For sure, the Lord told to them, Fear not. Peace be with you, because I'm here. And the word tells us that in moments like this, those are the moments in which we truly see who our God is. And the Bible tells us that when you go through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not going to drown you. When you go through the fire, the fire is not going to burn you. Because our God is the God Almighty. And this is the God that we serve. Is the Lord that is amongst us. Is a God that is beside us. Is a God that is receiving us. Inside the furnace. They were thrown in the furnace. They were not prevented f from going through the trial, but the Lord was with them. And it is in a moment like this that we see the Lord, because nobody wants to go through the furnace. Everybody wants the blessing earlier. Lord, send the, the hurricane to the other side. But the Lord has shown that, that even if the hurricane passed nearby, the Lord has protected our homes, had protected each servant, each home here represented. A few had um, some damage, a few days without electricity or a, a job, but the Lord has remained with us. And we walk. They will walk inside of the furnace. I see four walking there. Uh, they were not tied down. The only thing that the fire burned was their ropes that were tying them down. The word says that when the lead, the Jesus delivers us, we are truly free. When the Lord delivers man, you are truly free of sin, of vices, of the things of this world. That's why, my brother, glorify the Lord. Don't be tied down to the things of this world. Don't be tied to the trial because you are victor victorious. You already have the inheritance of God to be called victorious. Youth, you are victorious in the Lord. Adolescents, you are victorious in the Lord. Church, we are victorious in the Lord. Nothing ties us down to this world. Nothing ties us because the Lord has already delivered us. Delivered us, And we are here and this is proof of it. If you are here praising the Lord, it's because He delivered us and we recognize the power of God. They were just walking. Nobody that walks gets upset. If you are leisurely walking, you are happy. Yeah, you may be uh, walk upset and angry, upset, frustrated. We can you can walk um, in, in different ways, but you, if you are leisurely walking, it's because you are happy. If you if you it's difficult to see a person that is leisurely walking upset. The Bible says that they were leisurely walking. 
and that they were praising the Lord because Jesus was with them. The Lord was walking with them. They were for sure praising the name of the Lord for sure because they were with God because God had delivered them from the death and the Lord had delivered them from the fury of the power of the King Nebuchadnezzar. The Lord has delivered us from any evil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants to do. And that's what the God, uh, what God is doing amongst us. We have gone through a trial, but the Lord has preserved us. And many times we're going to go through many trials. Many are still going through trials today. They don't even come close to the trial of the hurricane. Maybe you are in a trial as well. Maybe it's health and or trial at work, uh, a trial in a family or a marriage, maybe, who knows, maybe you are going through trials too. But no one thing, you, you are not alone. The Lord is with you. The fourth man is present. You may, during this trial, be leisurely walking. You may be today with a uh, terrible uh, sickness and still be leisurely walking with the Lord. Why? How is it explained? You only walk uh, during a trial if the fourth man is present. You can only give praise to the Lord during a trial you're going through if the Lord, who is the fourth man, is present in your life. Don't try to go to a trial alone. Don't try to isolate yourself. Don't run away from the Lord but run towards the arms of the Lord. And the Lord is always present because He's the fourth man. You may be going through a trial in your marriage. The Lord is the fourth man. He wants to be present. You may be going through a trial at work. You may not have a job at the moment. But the Lord may open the door. He has the power to open the door because the Lord is present. You just need to trust the Lord. You just need to open up your heart and tell him that you are thankful. The trial comes, but the Lord also sends the resource. We'll never be living our lives without trials and tribulations. But it is on those moments in which we have to recognize our Lord. In moments like this that the Lord set aside those that are faithful and those that are unfaithful. Uh, those the moments of trial are moments in which the Lord puts his servant uh, set them aside from the multitude from the crowd from the world there the Lord embraces and the embrace of the Lord is always very good because the embrace of the Lord is surely an embrace of our soul he not only embraces us physically he not only embraces our, embraces our flesh, but He also embraces our soul. And when we receive the embrace of the Lord, we truly free, feel the refreshment. So then we can leisurely walk with the Lord through doing trials and in the midst of a furnace that was risen in power seven times. They were walking leisurely with the Lord Jesus. And that's what the Lord has for us. That's what the Lord had for us during this terrible moment of trial. I want to tell you that many here were scared. Should we leave? Should we not? A few left the state, but a few stayed. But the hand of the Lord was with each, each one of them. To the ones that stayed and the ones that left, the Lord protected them. The, the ones that left, they left, but they left their belong is here but when they came back they saw the protection of the Lord and we are here to say Lord we praise you because the fourth man was remained with us and the king said for sure I knew this three one but that one he looks like the son of God and today we have we are sure of it that our testimony speaks strongly even the church even the places where there are churches I don't know if if uh, the brother noticed but the hurricane moved in a way that it avoided 
every place where there was a church, even when he entered in the middle of the state of Florida, it went between the church of Sar Sarasota and Brenton and Orlando. Where there's a servant of the Lord, the Lord has protected us. It went in the middle, exactly between Orlando and Brenton, so that brethren can see how this God is the God of power, the God of wonders, the God that calms down the storm, the God that uh, commands the wind to silence, and the God with, that is with us when you go through the fire. The fire is not going to burn you because our God is the God of fire, the God that knows us. The God has protected us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now we're going to hear a song. And you, with uh, your closed eyes, will be glorifying the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Aleluia! Glória a Jesus! Bendito seja o nome 
Blessed be the name of the Lord, Lord to God, Amen, Lord to Jesus. Our brethren, after the king that called the three and said the following, has been made a decree for each nation that there's no a new decree that every person that is says anything against the king, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because there's no other God that can deliver like this God. Glory to, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The fellowship does this. The fellowship makes the God fight in our behalf. Want to have fellowship with the God, with the Lord? There is no power. There is no wind. There is no. There is no power that can compare compare to our God. Amen. I'd like to invite the deacons to come to the front in order to receive the elements and the words that because I received from the Lord. But uh, I also taught you that, and Jesus, in the day, in the night in which he was betrayed, take, took the bread and giving thanks, take and eat, because this is my body is being um, broken uh, for you. So, in the same way as after drinking, he said, he took the cup and said, "Then this cup is a new testament in my blood. Do this every time in memory of me, because every time." That you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until He comes. Because whoever eats of this bread and drink of this cup unworthy, in an unworthy way will be guilty. So examine yourself before you can eat of this bread and drink of this cup. This supper is not the church of Maranatha, it is the supper of the Lord. We are being baptized in the waters. You are, have um, have enough age, old enough. If you are in fellowship with the church that you congregate, you are invited to participate with us. Because the supper does this. It generates faith. It generates recognition. When you participate in the supper of the Lord, we confess to Him our sins. We ask forgiveness. And we tell the Lord, ask the Lord, strength to uh, walk away from the practice of sin is because it just asking forgiveness for for sins and remain sinning makes no sense we know that sin is always in man but we need to fight against the practice of sin and only the Lord can do this only the power of the blood of Jesus that their living power can give you the means to run away from sin. So you need to examine your life and pray to the Lord and participate participate in the supper. Because the supper 
generates the spiritual life. When you participate in the serpa, you are receiving spiritual health from the Lord and strength to withstand and accept Jesus as the Savior of our life. And you will be proclaiming the death of Jesus until He comes. So this is a special moment for the Church of the Lord. Because here today, the Lord wants in this morning to bless us. You can pray for the elements, first the bread. Lord, we ask that you give us the understand because this is a perfect moment. It symbolizes your body that was broken to give us life so we may receive in you the sustenance, the strengthening that come in this moment, fulfilling a revelation that was mentioned in your word that we may remember the sacrifice of Jesus and do this until the coming of the Lord Jesus. Lord, it it brings joy to us as we minister this supper in the name of Jesus.
Glória a Deus. Has everyone received the bread? Has any, anybody not received the bread or the wine? The Lord has shown uh, a couple of visions. I saw a manifestation of angels in the midst of the church. And those angels, they were sent here to minister the acts of the justice of the Lord in our behalf. A few received uh, cures, renewal, deliverance. Maybe you still walking tied out. Maybe some sin practice, but this morning the Lord is delivering you. The ties, the fire of the Spirit, the burning fire of the Lord is this morning burning any tie, any rope. And today you are free this morning. Take possession of this. And there is a woman especially that the Lord has removed a tumor, a malignant, malignant tumor. And she was cured. Sometimes you don't even know. Sometimes you, you already have something. But in this morning, the Lord is curing. You know why? Because you are, you are a chosen of the Lord. Because you are a blessed one. Because you have chosen not to bow down to this prince of this world. And you didn't kneel down in front of the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. But on much on the contrary, you're um, legally walking with the Lord Jesus during your trial and tribulation. And you are hearing, peace be with you. And this morning, you can glorify the Lord. Is it me? Is it not? Glory to Jesus. If it is you, you can take possession of this victory here. A malignant tumor, the Lord had removed an operation of wonder. Glory to Jesus. And there's another gift that was showing in the hands of the Lord, directing the winds, changing the, the route of the hurricane, exactly what we saw, exactly what the Lord has, has provided for us. The Lord had delivered us. Now we're going to have word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we want to exalt you because you are a rescue Lord thank you for your grace upon us it has been enough for us we praise you Lord because we are not we're not anything Lord we're flawed and imperfect but every day you have shown your power your love towards our lives we glorify Lord because our hearts rejoice Lord because we serve such a wonderful God to be here in your presence this morning Lord we praise you Lord Give you praise for everything that you have operated among us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, this morning, be speaking with the Lord, examining your life, placing in the altar of the Lord, and giving the Lord strength. Receiving from the Lord is strength so that you can participate on the supper of the Lord, so we may find grace in God's eyes. Now I invite everyone to kneel down. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Let us stay a few minutes glorifying the name of the Lord. Glorifying all the power of the Lord. There is um, 
the God that is all knowing, uh, is almighty, uh, omnipresent. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Our God is three times holy. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. To Jesus, I want to be the oh Lord, soft. We let us sing softly. Beloved children, your God has come down, has been victorious in your battles, but He wants to be victorious inside of your heart. Situations that you lived through in the past, yes, many times brings terror to you, but I want to be with you, the one that uh, defeats any curse and uh, want, uh, may remain upon you my blessing and I give my peace so that among the trial you may feel the, the peace in your soul many times you see and the trials will still remain but my I feel I make you feel my peace I will allow you to feel the wisdom that comes from heaven that comes from my throne to give you strength to give you all the means to be victorious of the attack of the enemy. Um, thousands of my angels remain around you and remain to give you security. My children, I tell you that your attitudes or your actions uh, will allow the angels to remain around you. Be zealous for this. I will be with you throughout your trials. And I will give each one of you a moment of joy in the midst of a great situation. I am your joy, I am your strength, your encouragement, and your salvation. All together, let us first eat the bread and soon after the cup. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. The church may be seated. Let us hear a song as the elements are being, uh, the cups are being collected.
to God. Hell is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of your, is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, love of God, good and eternal Father, a sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the uh, whole people of the Lord, Amen. now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Glory to God. We're running tonight in our service, 7.30, an evangelistic service. The Lord has been with us. Now it's time for us to do God's work. The Lord took care, took care of us. Now we're going to do the work of the kingdom of the Lord. Invite those that have been the target of your prayer, your family member, your neighbor, your co-worker. The one that you have been praying to the Lord on their behalf. Anything else? Yes. Doing the prayer, I heard that Everyone came, left this place feeling that they need to serve the Lord better. The service is for, is for this reason, so we can make a definition of the Lord. You already received this morning this authority from God, this call from the Lord. You have been now brought to the presence of the Lord. Now serve the Lord with heart, with dedication, with strength. And you see how God will do much more in your life. A vision. During the supper, I saw that there was a fire that would cover the entire church. With the power of the Holy Spirit, while the angels were working on our behalf, we see the presence of the Lord, the manifestation of the power of God, the heat of the Spirit. The word says that when the two or three gather in my name, I will be there. And the Lord is with us. Whatever you are at work, uh, uh, in the office, painting, cleaning the house, taking care of the children, whatever you are, the fourth man is always present. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.
Ele tá bem aqui. É, o menor violão que tiver, desde o amanhecer. 